What's up, Cancer? How's it going? Thanks so much for checking out Reflexive Moon Tarot. My name is Sarah, and I will be doing a reading for the full moon in Libra. Also a lunar eclipse. Also, we just had the equinox. So lots going on. Lots of energy happening. I certainly am feeling it. But it was so cool uh, the other day to, well, actually it was just yesterday, to see the moon and the sun. Like the sun is setting and the moon is rising and, you know, parallel to each other. It's quite the spectacle. So go out there and observe. All right. So we are actually starting off with our moon deck here, Moonology. Just to sort of set the tone. Oh. We've got two here. I jumped out. We have the new moon in Scorpio and a waxing crescent moon. So have faith in your dreams and work through your fears. Working through your fears is a great way to have faith in your dreams. And the two basically cancel out each other, right? So having faith in your dreams helps you to work through your fears. It basically trumps them. And then working through your fears also gives you the capacity to continue to have faith, right? So, Scorpio New Moon vibes. Let's see what the tarot says for cancer. We have the Empress reversed. Who else just got this? Gemini. So struggling to be grounded or your concern and it may be in might be in a new idea. Not having an idea of what it is that you want to do. But at least you have faith, you have blessings from the sun. Staying consistent with your routine, um, happiness, joy. You got baby Bacchus and my little pony chilling. So the sun is one of my favorite cards. Because it's all about, for me, what I love about the sun the most is the fact that it's consistency. It represents like the wisdom of consistency, of always being there, of always being a reliant energy source. You know, so sometimes for me, for example, like I really have a hard time remembering that, that joy at times. And just knowing like when this card pops up, it, it's such a great reminder Um so even if you feel like you're fresh out of ideas right now or struggling to be grounded, maybe maybe it's cold outside and you can't put your bare feet on the ground and that's what you want, you know, something as simple as that, just knowing still that it's bright and hot somewhere and that, you know, soon that will be for you. And it's always, it's always something that we can access no matter what. The sun is always there for us. Until we experience a supernova. <laughs> Not in this lifetime, that's for sure. So, overlooking the situation, we have the five of swords. No, that's the seven of swords. Reversed. So, okay, if you were if you were concerned about ideas or maybe you're, you know, you've been brewing up a little bit of toxic ideas, feeling like, you know, there's something working against you when in actuality it's probably something like seasonal affective disorder or uh, just, you know, whatever, whatever things are working against you because... Because there's always that chaotic force. There's always negativity. But the universe is telling you that it's not, there's no massive takedown coming at you at this time, which is good. There's nobody trying to slander your good name. No one has anything bad to say about you. That's such a blessing. <laughs> like, that is such a blessing. So, 
count that blessing as your number one right now. We have the Eight of Swords within your subconscious. So it could be that, you know, despite this blessing of not having anybody having, of not really having anybody have anything bad to say about you, there is just some type of mental entrapment that you're still dealing with subconsciously. You could be the person that is talking shit to yourself. And um, Gemini, I just read a bunch of, of stuff for Gemini that was real relevant to negative self-talk. And, um, you know, being your own best friend and telling yourself to shut the F up when you're not being kind to yourself. <coughs> There's like um, somebody that wrote about five levels of self-talk. Maybe you can Google that and you'll find something. But yeah, if you're feeling trapped in some type of way, it's going to be your mindset that gets you out of this entrapment and, and probably nothing else. This is this is what your subconscious is telling you too. Like this is an answer that you all that you know within yourself. So connect with it and connect with it hard because it's pretty powerful. And maybe like some vitamin D, you know, in whatever form works for you. Wink wink. So what's going on with your past? Energy suckers holding on to things. This could also be you letting go or like leveling up in terms of wealth. But I feel like this is kind of a loss that you experienced. Like you were having some hard times and maybe the recent past or, or for a while. And, you know, it could be related to not necessarily just manifesting money. It could just be that you really had to eliminate a lot of people um, in your life or the pandemic even. Like, no, you know, we still need to talk about this, right? Uh, there's a lot of trauma that people experienced as a result of the pandemic, especially like even if it was just socialization, social isolate, social isolation, that is that is like a mental health risk, huge, massive, and not everybody's over it. So this is something that you you've been dealing with. And so it might money might have been hard for you as well. But um, just messed up things happening in the past that is related to, that has impacted your your finances and probably more importantly your constitutional well-being but we have some familiarity coming through a very loving form of that there could be maybe a family reunion happening in your sphere um of loved ones, some type of reunion or some type of like nostalgic connection that you're going to really find satisfying in the near future. And, you know, if it's love, congratulations. Um, but this could also just be friends and just a gathering of like minded people for the sake of even entertainment. You may find even doing something that you used to love doing as a kid um, or just connecting with your inner child on some level to be equally as satisfying if the people are not accessible to you. Now we have the Knight of Cups here. So <laughs> the Knight of Cups has some like pimp like values on some level <laughs> maybe a bit of a hustler or a player mostly when they're reversed but this could also just be you on the prowl having some fun or just wanting to do that on some level and that is totally okay uh this this night is also very like loving and they're a great friend to have. They're a great lover to have. So, like, you know that you are the shit when it comes to that. Uh, not really sort of at the queen level, this this attitude right now. Uh, it could just be a bit of, like, you wanting to have a little bit of reckless fun. There is a, a sense of recklessness. But also, sometimes this can reflect as being a bit needy in terms of wanting either too much freedom, too much, um, I want to say manipulation, but it's it's almost just like no strings attached type of deal. And um, maybe not always being completely, 
completely open about the no strings attached, like being very loving on some level, but not really committed. It's almost, I, I, there's this person that said uh, this term to me that I thought was really funny and cute, <coughs> an intimacy whore. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. But anyways, I digress. The Nine of Cups definitely is an intimacy whore, um, but not in a bad way necessarily, just in a way where it may be misleading and it is what it is. So that's your attitude. This could also be that emotionally you need to take your ideas and whatever it is that you're working on for in terms of growth a little bit more seriously. This could also mean that you're, you may need to take the prospect of children in your life, um, be either being um, pregnant or um, having a partner or impregnating a partner um, or just having a partner that's pregnant or adoption, anything a little bit more seriously. Because the Knight of Cups doesn't take that shit seriously until it's like smack in front of their face. And, you know, that could be it. With the Empress reversed and the, pros and the Sun, it could be, like, the prospect of a child, but not really, like, you know, feeling like this is really coming out of left field and uh, it's not what you intended, but here you are, right? Uh, so we have the Four of Cups. Okay. Um, being a little bit emotionally cut off is usually what this card... Um, portrays on some level but here because it's reversed it could be that you are reconnecting or you know like maybe you've had a bit of an icy heart at times and you are feeling more warm about it or this could also be that people see you or the way that you seem from the outside is that you are I mean it makes absolute sense being a cancer that you have like this really soft interior despite an exterior shell. So people are able to see you, you know, maybe the, it's maybe it's uh, it's pretty obvious on some level. <laughs> and you know, if you wanna if you wanna fix that, if you wanna really, you know, maintain or give off the impression that you have this very solid hard exterior. And and don't get me wrong, because crabs are pretty powerful. Like they, you know, that little clingy pincher can hurt, right? It can cause damage. So, watch out for that. We have the two of pentacles reversed. So you might be afraid of like going back to some type of paycheck to paycheck situation. You could also be... Um, hoping that you never have to deal with a paycheck to paycheck situation again. Um, hoping to find balance and um, respecting what it, like your gifts that you have to offer and honoring the gifts that you have to offer uh, within your constitutional being as well as, as what you have to offer the world outside of you. So it looks like there might be a few hard times where ahead. Yeah. Somebody may, you may find somebody misleading you or hustling you on some level. This may be two people, you and somebody else. We have the Queen of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles have come through reversed. And then we have the Five of Pentacles upright. So just be very, very careful with who you invest your energy and time in. You may feel you may be completely misled by by two individuals, and or unless if this is you and another individual who just really um, are in like some type of very unhealthy entanglement, or just really uh, investing, making poor investment decisions, 
or just coming together in some type of union, some type of contractual agreement and just not really having the right intentions. It's not a good idea. You know, with the Empress, with the Empress reverse from the get-go, it's not a good idea. <coughs> Maybe there's like all the feels that you wish you you could ever dream of, but it's just, that's just it. It's just some feels. So, some type of entrapment situation. I really hope that it's not, you know, creation of a child is not a part of that process. But if it is, like, please remember that, you know, the onset of intimate partner violence often happens during pregnancy. So just be, be mindful of taking care of yourself. And self-love and balance is, is the key. And, you know, you'll learn from this. Whatever whatever happens, it's not the end of the world. You're actually going to gain some knowledge, I feel like. I felt some type of gain. And, and this could be also, like, you just, like, not making the mistakes as other people in your life. But it's going to be, like, there's just some level of discomfort that you are not willing to embrace or allow yourself to you know, feel those growing pains in order to transform. And it, it's definitely on an emotional level. So there's some type of something. You're going to have to let your guard down on some level. And that is going to be inherently connected to moving on to the next idea that will most likely be a good one. But just be careful. Just be very, very careful, right? There's going to be, or there already has been some heartache that you just haven't really processed and you're jumping into something new. So say no to serial monogamy. That is my best advice, Cancer. Have faith in your dreams and work through your fears. Like that is, that's an emotion right there. Maybe you're afraid of getting hurt and you need to just be very careful that you don't manifest your fears because that is the opposite of faith. 100%. Let's pull some Oracle. We have our vintage deck today is the Tarot Affirmations deck. I feel like this one's going to stick around with me for a while. If this, is, this is like, I've had this forever. <laughs> Over half of my life probably. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Well, it's definitely over half my life. That's creepy. Oh, look at here. We have the two of coins upright. So turning that frown upside down. Let's, let's uh, you know, screenshot this. All right. I am the first stage. I'm in the first stages of change. So speaking about stages, life stages and change. Experiencing the inevitable ups and downs of getting a new venture off the ground, right? All right, so it's tricky. I am learning to juggle two things at once, to play with alternatives and shuffle priorities as needed. I am flexible and adaptable. I recognize that new ventures require experimentation and adjustment. I am expanding my horizons, my perspective changes as I continue to play with the results of my experiments. I am growing in a balanced way. I find harmony and stability in the midst of change. So these, this is like, this is what you need to do to manifest and embody that positive self-talk, not the negative self-talk. So again, screenshot. Okay, let's um, let's see how we're keeping it spiritual AF here at Reflex Moon Tarot. All right, two of them. Let's read them. We got be a badass love beam today. Why not? Right. We got the sun right here. That's right, today in your job to fill every room you go in with laser beams of love. 
<laughs> That's so cute. If you can't do laser beams, then make your heart bubble machine and fill the room with bubbles. If that doesn't work for you, then you should bring donuts to work. Donuts make almost everyone happy. Go forth with your mission, Grasshopper. And gluten-free vegans exist out in this world. Please accommodate them. That's all I can say. Go outside and do shit. It's been proven all over the place that trees and nature and fresh air and all that shit help fight depression, anxiety, addiction, and pretty much anything else that might ail you. Find some place to put your feet in the grass or the dirt or the water or anywhere that's not concrete. A five-minute nature break can reduce the amount of shitty thoughts in your brain drastically AF. That is actual evidence-based research right there. Going out and doing shit, even if it's just for five minutes, makes the world of a difference in your day. Rain, snow, sunshine, all the things. All right? Happy lunar eclipse.